All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. 500 here. We're going to do it with probability and odds today, and hopefully we could get ourselves some real good knowledge about this because we're going to see a lot of probability and odds in our calculators test. So we're going to go ahead and practice this stuff so we can make sure we're on point, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these problems here, okay? First things first, there's two different types of problems we're going to be talking about right here. And one of them is probability, all right? Probability basically is a fraction. It's always a fraction. You know, sometimes we express it as decimals in our answer choices, but it's going to be what we're looking for, what the problem is asking us to find, or whatever we're going to select, or whatever you want to call it, our selection from the problem. And it's always going to be out of the total amount. Okay, so probability is pretty much like a fraction. I mean, it's just like a common ratio. But we usually change it into decimals for these problems here. Now, there's another type of problem that we're going to see. Odds. And odds is very similar. Very similar. It's basically what we're looking for out of the complement. What we're not looking for. That's odds. But really, again, a lot of these problems are just typical fractions. And it's all about setting them up. So let's get that, go ahead and take a look at this one. We're going to calculate the probability of drawing a prime number card from a standard deck of cards. This is all this important information, okay? Now, the first things first, if you don't know about a deck of cards, well, I'm going to go ahead and teach you some things about them. Deck of cards, as you can see, we have a lot of different choices that we could get whenever we're playing cards, okay? Then we got the jack, the queen, and the king. Of course, no one, but it starts with ace, then two all the way through ten, jack and queen. But then there's different suits. For example, we got the hearts, which are red, and we got diamonds, which are red. And then we got ourselves the clubs, which kind of looks like a clover, I guess. Some of you might know it as a clover here, but the clubs and the spades, okay? Those are black, all right? Those are black cards. Um, there's very particular type of face cards. Face cards are usually called the jack, queen, and king because they have faces on them. But, you know, those are very specific types. Now, in this problem, we're looking for a prime number card, so we gotta know a little bit about math. And, well, obviously, we're here in calculators, so you better know some math, okay? So, um, two, three prime, five's prime, seven's prime, not nine, though. Some people think it's all the odds. Remember, the only prime number that's even is the number two. Every other even number after that is divisible by two. So really, we only got four cards that are prime. But we have four of them in hearts, four of them in diamonds, four of them in clubs, and four of them in spades. So four times four gives us a total of the number of cards we're looking for. Now, I said total, but I don't mean the total as a denominator. I mean the numerator. We got 16. Now, the total amount of cards in the deck, well, as you can see, one, two, three, four. Well, we got 10 right here from ace to 10, then jack, queen, king makes it 13 cards. And then four suits, 13 times four, gives us 52 total cards in the deck. Of course, some special scenarios include something called jokers, but in a standard deck of cards, jokers don't exist because jokers aren't played in any of these games. Like, you know, I mean, really, they're just, they're just out there to kind of, you know, throw a little bit of a, you know, different type of game out there. In any case, we got 16 divided by 52. The correct answer is 3.08 times 10 to the negative first. Or standard notation style, if you guys are interested in that. And you know I am, because the faster we could come up with these numbers correctly, the easier these problems get. All right, that's it. 0 0.308. Next one. We got to calcul calculate the probability of rolling a 2 on the standard 6-sided die. Now, here's the deal. When we're rolling die, there's, well, well, first off, a die is only one. Dice is two. That's why I usually say a pair of dice. Now, we got to know our total amount. Six sides on a cube, on the dice, and these are the possibilities that could happen when you roll a dice. Now, we're not looking for all six. We're only rolling a two. So, really, our answer is just one out of six. We hit one enter, six divide. We call it a day. It's 1.67 times 10 to the negative first or 0.167. I mean, these problems are pretty easy if you know what we're looking for. And that's what I'm all about, making sure we could do what we got to do 
to be successful here okay so let's take a look at the next problem here we're gonna calculate the odds now this is the first problem this is the first time we're gonna see this we're gonna calculate odds here okay of rolling a standard fair six-sided die die meaning one die meaning one having it land on a prime number so yet again we got one we got two we got three four five and six we gotta know our primes and in this problem two is a prime three is a prime and five is a prime so what we're looking for entails those three numbers so we got three now what's left over it's not gonna be six the dumb is that gonna be six it's gonna be three honestly I don't even need my calculator for this one it's gonna be three over three which gives us one if you put one though you just got this problem wrong you cannot put one you need to put it in in the actual correct format if you don't know what it is well you could just type one in your count or you could just do three enter three divide and it's gonna be 1.00 times 10 to the zero power but if you're gonna just put one if you're gonna quickly do this you gotta put 1.00 you cannot just put one it would be wrong format it's not three significant digits all right, I like this problem a lot because this problem entails actually understanding what this stuff is. We have the odds an event happening is 9 over 7. And we got to calculate the probability of that same event happening. So what's what we're really doing is understanding that 9 out of 7 is the odds. So to find the total amount, I mean, of course, we're still looking for the event happening. So it's still going to be 9 as our numerator. But the total here is going to be 9 plus 7, which is 16. It's as easy as that. 9 divided by 16, we call it 0.563. Or 5.63 times 10 to the negative 1 power. And that's it. Negative first power. Pretty easy problems once you get the hang of them. Okay, we're calculating the odds. Flipping a coin. Notice a coin, we only have two possibilities. You're either going to get heads or you're going to get tails. Now, here's why I like this problem here. Because we also, we also need to understand that we're gonna roll a standard die and having it land on one. This one's pretty hardcore here because at the end of the day, you gotta understand what this word right here means. And this is the beginning of two events. We actually have the probability of rolling a heads, sorry, of flipping a heads, probability of getting a heads, Actually, it's not even probability. It's the odds. That's why you got to underline it. The odds of getting a heads and getting a one. All right. So we got to calculate each of these fractions and at the end, multiply them together. That's how we do this. So my odds of getting a heads. Well, there's one heads out of one. It's not really out of one, but it's a one to one ratio because we got one heads, one tails. Those are our only options. Next one, though, next one, we're going to think of a die again. We got six total options, but there's only one choice that's one. There's only one one. There's one one. And there's five that are not one. Okay? So there's one one, and there is five that are not one. So we got that fraction right there. We got, remember, one heads. And if you think of it, there's one that's not heads. Here are the two fractions we got. And to do a compounded event, we got to multiply them. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. You could just put it in your calculator. And 1 divided by 5, 2.00 times 10 to the negative 1 power. Or 0 0.200. That's it. Honestly, probability is super easy. You just got to be able to figure out what's going on and understand the problems and read them. But really, they're not hard. But we got to learn them. We got to learn them. Calculate the odds of rolling a sum of seven on a standard pair of dice. See, this one's interesting. I like this one a lot. I'm going to go ahead and show you what are the different possibilities that could happen when you're rolling dice, okay? Really, there's a total of 36 different possibilities. So, for example, if you want to get a 2 on a dice, there's only one way to get the number 2. Well, it's a 1 and a 1. But if you want to get a 3, there's actually two ways. How do I know that? Well, you could roll a 1 on the first dice and a 2 on the second, or you could roll a 2 on the first dice and a 1 on the second. Okay? How about a number 4? What can we get? How can we get a 4? Well, we could roll 1, 3. We could roll 3, 1. 
and we can roll two two. So we have three different ways to get a four. You know, I wonder what happens on the other side of this thing here. You know, on the other side, because you know we got we got more numbers. Okay, this is this is on the top is gonna be my outcomes. Like what 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 are we could happen? We got we could get a t two, and this is the possibilities of getting that outcomes, like how we could get them, possibilities, okay? So, I got eight, nine, what's the largest number we get on the die? Well, I guess we could roll a six and a six, right? A six of six gives us a total of 12. And how many ways can we get 12? Well, really only one way. And then, well, to get 11, how can you get 11? Well, we could roll a five and a six, we could roll a six and a five. So that's two ways we get 11. How do we get a 10? Hmm. We could roll, I guess, a 4 and a 6, a 5 and a 5, and a 6 and a 4. So really, there's three ways to get that. Huh. You know what? This kind of looking like a little pattern here. And I hope you're able to kind of see where this is going. To get a 5, you could roll a 1 and a 4, a 2 and a 3, a 3 and a 2, or a 4 and a 1. There's four ways to get a 5. To get a six, you could roll a one five, two four, three three, four two, five one. I hope you're following along. There's a lot of different ways we can get six. There's five different ways. See, that's the pattern here, ladies and gentlemen. When we're coming into this, we're, we're basically starting with two and twelve, with one each, and we're just working our way up till we get to seven, which is really what we're going to be using for this problem. We want to get a sum of seven. So how many ways can we get seven? Six. Now, what's our total gonna be? Well, as you can see here, one, two, three, we could just add these all up, add them all up. And if you do that, you end up with 36 possibilities. Why 36? Because you could roll six different numbers on the first dice, you could roll six different numbers on the second dice. And six times six gives us 36. So at the end of the day, that's our probability. We got six, enter, 36 divide, and we got it. It's 1.67 times 10 to the negative first, or it's 0.167. Look, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, these problems are pretty easy once you get the hang of it. But you got to know a little bit of math. But once we get that math, oof, and you got to read carefully. I'm not going to lie here. I did a big boo-boo, big boo-boo. We don't want that. Because look, I did a 6 out of 36. That's probability. This is an odds question. So I'm glad I caught myself here. And hopefully you catch yourself here too. There are six different choices that we could get a 7. But there's only 30 choices that are not 7s. So really this answer is kind of the same as the last one. 2.00 times 10 to the negative first or 0 0.200, all right? Honestly, I prefer standard notation, but really, that's the correct way to do this. You gotta make sure you're reading carefully. How can you get this wrong? You don't read carefully. You pull a Mr. Delgado. But it's all right, we're here to learn. So let's keep it going. We gotta calculate the probability of rolling a sum less than seven on a standard pair of dice. Well, as we can see, we just kind of figured it out here. We got, hmm, six and seven, uh, five, four, you know, right? We could just, we could just kind of wait. If you see a pattern, this five added with one makes six. Four and two makes another six. So we got three sixes, if we think of it that way. We got 18 plus this three. We got 21 different choices over here, okay? That are not sevens. So that leaves us with what? 15 choices that are sevens? Well, we could just add them up. We are less than seven. 15 choices are less than seven. Well, one plus two is three. Three is six. Plus four is 10. Plus five is 15. There are five different options of rolling a sum less than seven. And since probability, we already know there's 36 different choices. This is our total for the probability. So we're going to go ahead and put 15 and divide it by 36 and our correct answer of getting this probability would be 4.17 times 10 to the negative first or 0.417 that's all it is ladies and gentlemen it's an easy problem when we get the hang of it all right so let's read this one 
A bag contains marbles, six green, eight red, 12 blue, five yellow. So we add them up, we got a total of what, 20, 26? We got 31 is my total. All right, so 31 is the total. A marble selected at random and not replaced. This is where it gets really good, okay? So the first time we select the marble, it's it's gonna be 31, all right? We're gonna select it, but we're not gonna replace it, okay? That means I'm not I'm not putting that marble back. So I'm gonna calculate my probability of getting a blue marble first and then a yellow. So let's take a look at our fractions. This is a compound event. We're gonna end up multiplying. So my probability of getting a blue one is gonna be what? 12 out of 31 because we have 31 total. Now. I'm not replacing that blue. I'm not putting it back in the bag. I am have it I, ho I have it in my hand. So I really don't have 30 more. I mean 31 anymore. I only have 30 total now because that blue one is already in my hand. But now I'm looking for those yellow. Looking for those yellow. And guess what? We have our probability here. So easiest way I would do this problem. Well, of course, calculator trick. You could hit dot, decimal 12, decimal 31. You already got your fraction. It's already nested for you. We got it. You're going to see zero whole numbers. And then you're going to see 12 over 31. We hit enter. Then decimal 5, decimal 30. Then hit multiply. And that's it. Our correct answer is going to be 6.45 times 10 to the negative second. Or 0 0.0645. I mean, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. They're not hard problems, but it is what it is. Okay, so next problem right here. Calculate the odds, drawing an ace from a standard deck of cards with no jokers. Well, how many aces we got? Four aces. How many cards in that 52 total are not aces? 48 are not aces. Because we're doing odds, odds is important. So we're gonna hit four enter, 48 divide, and that's that, we already got it. 8.33 times 10 to the negative 12 or 0 0.0833, that's it. Let's do the next one. Calculate the probability, rolling a sum greater than 10 on a standard pair of dice. So probability is great, I like probability. So how many numbers are greater than 10? 11 and 12. Okay, well we can start with 12. We have one way to roll 12. We got two ways to roll an 11. So really we got a total of three ways to get a sum greater than 10. Now, how many possibilities are on that pair of dice? Well, six times six, 36. So three enter, 36 divide, and we got it. 8.33 times 10 to the negative second, or again, 0 0.0833. Pretty interesting here. Now you might say, why or why are they the same answers? You might notice that. Well, if I simplified this fraction, it'd be one over 12. And if I simplified this fraction by three, it's the exact same thing. That's why it's working. That's why it's working here. All right, so don't think that you're not doing math correctly if you get the same answer. You gotta think about reasonableness. And if we know math, it's pretty easy. All right, so I love reading probability questions because they're super easy if you know what you're doing. We got a 60% chance it will rain this weekend. Okay, so what does that really mean? That means 60% is already our probability here. We got 60 rain out of 100 total options. That's the total. That's our probability. Calculate the odds of it raining this weekend. Well, now we got to switch it up. So we got 60 is again the rain, but instead of putting 40 as our denominator here, we're going to put, sorry, 100 as a denominator here, we're going to put 40 because 40 is the amount of that percent that is not rain. So we're gonna go ahead and 60 enter, 40 divide, and guess what? Our correct answer is 1.50 times 10 to the zero, or just easy, 1.50. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. We got the odds given to us of an event happening are 6 to 31. Calculate the probability the event won't happen. So if we take a look at this, we're looking for probability here. We're not looking for odds. They gave us the odds. So six is event happening, okay? So that 31 represents the event not happening, 
okay? It's a very, very significant distinction here. But probability is not about not happening. The probability is the total. So we could already add these two up and we got 37s our total. Now we're looking for the probability of the event won't happen. Another word for it is not happening. And we already got that number right here. So it's going to be 31 not happening. So check that out, ladies and gentlemen. If you understand a little bit of probability, man, we just did a couple. We just did a hard 71. Was it really that hard? Was it? No, it wasn't. But it looks intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. But to be honest, with Mr. 500 here, this should be easy as cake. So we got 0.838 is the answer in standard form. Or if you want scientific notation, 8.38 times 10 to the negative first. But either way, we got our answer. Easy work, and we could keep it going. Keep it going. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. A jar has seven blue, five yellow, one white, 12 red. Immediately, what I would do is just add them up, and I get my total of 25. So that's my total in this jar. Calculate the probability of drawing a blue and then a white if the first marble is replaced. So I'm not gonna keep the first marble in my hand. I'm gonna put it back. So let's see what kind of problem we could set up right here, okay? So I'm looking for a blue. We have seven blue out of a total of 25, okay? A total is 25 and there's seven blue. Now, I'm not gonna have to replace it, so when I do my next fraction here, I'm not gonna have a different total. My total's still gonna be 25 because I, I put it back, I'm replacing it. I'm not keeping it in my hand. Now, I'm looking for a white, and I really only have one white because that's what it says. I'm looking for the one white, so that's gonna be pretty hard to get that one white, but you know what? It's not about how hard it's gonna be. It's about getting that answer. So we're gonna put seven, well, decimal seven, decimal 25, and then we're going to put decimal 1, decimal 25, and hit multiply. And we got our answer. 1.12 times 10 to the negative second. Or if you want it in standard form, which is pretty telling once we write it in standard form, it's going to be 0 0.0112. That means there's about a 1.12% chance of this happening. How do I know it's a percent? 1.12? Well, if you multiply that number by 100, we got a percent. Now, we don't need to do that, but really, that's all it is. That's all it is. We got to know how to convert from decimals to percent pretty easily. If we could do that, you're going to be very successful in your normal class. All right, so we're looking for probability here. We want a five on a fair die. Now, they like to use that fair die because, well, sometimes it is unfair die, and they may have different chances of getting a significant number on these dice. But we have one five out of six total options on one die. So really, it's just one divided by six. And our correct answer here is 1.67 times 10 to the negative one, or decimal 167. I mean, it's a really easy problem if you actually understand what you're doing here. They're not hard, they aren't hard. Probability of rolling a sum of five on a standard pair of dice. All right, so we know we could start with two. And how many ways can we get a two? One way. Three, how many ways can we get a three? Two ways. Four, three ways. Five four ways and that's really what we need to do we just need to understand there are four ways there's four ways to get that five okay that's what we got to understand so now that we know there's four ways to get that five we got our numerator pair of dice well we got 36 there's 36 total and that's that we're good to go we got four enter 36 divide and we got, wait, one more time, 4 enter, 36 divide, because I typed out something a little wrong wrong right here, but it's okay, 0 0.111, or 1.11 times 10 to the negative first. Now, some of y'all in number sense, you could have simplified this to 1 ninth, and once you have the denominator of 9, well, that automatically is going to tell you we're going to have a repeating digit, in this case, the repeating digit's 1. All right, so we got the probability of an event happening is 17 out of 25. What's that mean? 17 happen, 25 total. That's all it means. Next, calculate the odds of that event happening. So if we got 25 total, how do we find out not happening? Well, we gotta find the difference. 25 minus 17. 
Well, let me use my brain power like. <laughs> I'm just messing around. So at the end of the day, what's the event happening? Well, we that that doesn't change. 17, 17 happened. But now with my crazy mathematical computer right here, my little difference going on, we got eight that will not happen. So we go ahead and put 17 divided by 8. Easy work. Easy work. 2.13. Standard notation. Or 2.13 times 10 to the 0. But notice, we don't even need to be putting that no more. Let's go ahead and go to standard. Odds. Odds of an event happening. Okay, odds of an event is 7 to 5. Calculate the probability of the event happening. Simple as that. 7 out of 12. And that's it. 7 enter, 12 divide. And we get 5.83 times 10 to the negative 1. Or 0.583. That's it. I mean, look, probability is super easy if you kind of, you know, understand how to set up a fraction. But once you got that under your tool belt, you know, it's pretty easy. So we already got 73 marbles in the jar. I probably don't need to even figure out that probability here. I mean, sorry, that total. There are 13 red, 31 white, 29 blue. Matt wants two blue. Calculate the probability of drawing two blue. The first marble, when drawn, is not replaced. Ooh, this one's gonna be beautiful. Okay, so how many blue we got? We got 29 blue out of a total of 73 marbles, okay? But now that I've drawn the blue, I'm not gonna have 29 blue anymore. I'm gonna have 28 blue because the first blue is already in my hand. I'm not putting it back in the bag. But you know what I am gonna have? Uh, less marble in the bag also. So instead of 73 total, it's gonna be 72 total. And so these are my two fractions, decimal 29, decimal 73. Got my first fraction in my calculator. Decimal 28, decimal 72. Hit multiply and we got it. 1.54 times 10 to the negative first power or decimal 154 154 it's you know pretty easy problem look i'm telling you i like probability probability is really easy if we actually understand it probability of flipping a dime and having it not land on tails so technically i mean there's two options on a dime when you flip it we want a heads and rolling a standard six-sided die and having it not land on six. Ooh, that one's good. So the first one, how many are not tails? Well, there's one not tails. Okay, remember this is probability. This is probably, wow, I spelled tails wrong. It's a late night, so you know. I'm doing this right now at about two o'clock in the morning. So that's, that's pretty much why I'm uh, making little tiny mistakes like that. But it's all good. It's all good because hopefully we get this popped out and you guys learn some little bit of probability. So there's one not tails out of two total options. Now, how many are not sixes? Well, if you look at a die, there's five that are not six. Okay. And how many total do we have in the die? Well, we have six total. These are our fractions. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, enter. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, multiply. And we got our answer. 4.17 times 10 to the negative first or standard notation style 0.417 that's it ladies and gentlemen easy clap odds sum of seven on a pair of dice look seven's the good one seven's the one that we got to know how many ways can we get seven there are six ways to roll a seven to roll seven there are six different ways that doesn't mean it's my fraction. I'm just kind of showing you right here, like the you know, you know. So, so we got six ways to roll a fraction. Remember, this is odds, odds. So we got six, sum of seven, sum seven. How many ways do not give us a sum of seven? We gotta know that too. Well, if there's 36 total, there's gonna be 30 that are not sum seven. So that's it. Six enter, 30 divide. And we end up with 2.00 times 10 to the negative 1, or 0.200. That's it. That's it. Easy, easy work. Next problem. Calculate the probability rolling a sum greater than 9 on a standard pair of dice. Well, let's figure out how many are greater than 9. Well, 10 is greater than 9. 
So is 11. So is 12. All right, how many ways can we roll a 12? Only one. 11, only two. 10, only three. We add up these three ways, these three different numbers, three, two, and one, make a total of six, some greater than nine. How many total? Of course, six times six, two dice, 36 total. And that's that. Six enter, 36 divide. Now, of course, you could do 0 0.6, 0 0.36, just hit enter, and we got our answer. 1.67 times 10 to the negative first or decimal 167. Of course, standard notation is my preference, okay, ladies and gentlemen? Number 71, calculate the odds of flipping a quarter and having it land on heads. Easy, easy problem. How many heads we got? We got one heads. How many not heads we got on the die? Sorry, a quarter. How many not heads? Oh, not neds, what am I writing here? I'm telling you, I'm making all these sloppy mistakes. How many are not heads? One. So our answer is one divided by one, well, one, because we're calculating odds. Or 1.00 times 10 to the zero. But really, standard notation is the way to go. Next problem here. The jar contains marbles. Four blue, five red, one green, 12 black. You could already put them together, and we end up with 12 total. A marble is drawn at random and then replaced. Calculate the probability of drawing a green and a red. Remember, there is a replacement in this problem, so it's going to be pretty easy when we actually see this. We're not going to have to minimize our total here. Green, how many green? One green out of 12 total. We're going to multiply because there's two events happening. How many reds we got? We got five red out of 12 total. We go ahead and multiply those fractions across. I mean, look, if we want to just do the work by hand, we just multiply straight across. 1 times 5, 5. 12 times 12, well, we get that math knowledge, 144. And that's really it. Of course, you could just type in these numbers in your calculator and you could just do the work. But we end up with 3.47 times 10 to the negative second, or 0 0.0347. That's it. That's it. Calculate the odds of not drawing a face card. Oof. How many are not faces? Not faces. Well, the easiest way to do this is figure out how many are faces. Well, I have three face cards. What are my face cards? Jack, queen, king. But I just don't have three. I have three in each of the suits. So really, I'm going to write not, not face cards right as my as my odds since we're doing odds here but really not not i mean really these cancel each other out it's like dealing with a negative and a negative negative and a negative combined make a positive so we it's like it's like we're canceling double negatives that's why they don't work in writing in english language but in math you got double negative it turns to a positive that's just how it is so how many face cards we got we got 12 face cards hmm so how many are not face cards well we know the total is 52 52 minus 12 40. So that's it. 40 divided by 12. And we get our answer of 3.33 times 10 to the 0. Standard notation style, 3.33. Makes sense. Makes sense. Calculate the odds. We're going to calculate the odds of rolling an odd sum on a standard pair of dice. Okay, so this was kind of interesting here. We're only looking for the odds. Okay, so we know 2 is not an odd. So I don't even know why I wrote that down, but I know three is. How many ways can we get three? We get a three two ways. We know five is. We skipped four, so that's why there's four ways to get a five, okay? We know seven is, and we know what that one should be. There's six. That's the most that we could roll, seven. We got the most different ways we could roll seven. Then we get nine. That's another odd sum. Remember, we're not increasing these anymore. Now it's decreasing. After seven, it goes like up to seven and downwards from seven, it goes down. It goes to four. And then how many ways can we roll an 11? Only two ways. So we're going to calculate the odds of rolling odd sum. Well, let's see. Let's add those numbers up. Six and four make 10. Four, 14, 18 have odd sum. So how many have not odd sum? Okay, now I, I could put even sum. Technically, I could put even sum. But, you know, when you're dealing with odds, you want to use the word not. 
and in this problem well how many well if, if there's 36 total well it's gonna be 18 I mean 36 minus 18 we put it in the calculator boom boom 18 so really 18 divided by 18 1.00 times 10 to the 0 or 1.00 which is the preferred method this is like the real way I would do it all right next problem calculate the odds of an event happening is 8 over 3 calculate the probability of the event happening so we're looking at turning this into probability we already have 8 now what's my total gonna be 11 that's all it is 8 enter 11 divide 7.27 times 10 to the negative first or better yet 727 after a decimal that's the way to do it easy numbers of 0 to 5 are put in the box calculate the odds of drawing out a prime number Ooh, first off odds now we really got to know our prime numbers here it's easy if we actually do know them all so 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 21 no I'm just joking there ain't no 21 21 is divisible by 3 we got 23 though not 25 man. anything anything ending with a 5 from now on after this 5 it's like 2 it's not gonna work then we got 27 of course divisible by 3 29 31 some people say 33 but 33 is divisible by 11 we ain't gonna do 33 35 37 is 37 is 39 is one of those tricky ones. People think 39 is, but 39 is divisible by 13. 41 sure is. That one is. 43 sure is. 43 sure is a prime number. Then we got 45. We leave it alone. We got 47. We leave that in the primes. And there you go. And there you go. Those are the prime numbers we got. So from 0 to 50. Now be careful. A lot of people think the total is going to be 50. It's actually not. There is... 51 numbers in the total because zeros included now how many of these are prime how many of these are prime now i'm going to check something real quick just to make sure i got all these numbers here but i think i got them i think i got them here let me just go ahead and make a little looky loo right here two three five seven eleven thirteen seventeen nineteen i got all those 23 29 31 37 41 43 47 look really I just wanted to check myself. I wanted to make sure I'm correct. And there's nothing wrong with looking at the internet. I mean, if you want to see what I was looking at, I was just looking at this. I was just looking at this right here. I was just trying to make sure that I could do these correctly, okay? So I was just looking at this right there. Right there. That's it. Prime numbers. I got this little prime number thing going on right here. And it helps me out. And nothing's wrong with looking at some information to be able to make sure you get the correct answer. Now, of course, can you do this on the day of the exam? You can't. You can't do it. But I'm here helping you out. And I just want to make sure that sometimes you're going to be working on these problems on your own time. Don't be afraid to go online and try to see some of these pieces of information if you're super lost. Anywho. Well, let's go ahead and make sure that we got these. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are 15 prime numbers up to 50. So 15 prime out of how many total? Don't put 50. 51. But wait a second, is this probability? It sure ain't. It sure ain't. So if you put 15 out of 51, you answered the wrong question. We're looking at odds here. So you got to make sure you get these answers correct. It's going to be 15 prime out of, well, 51 minus 15, 36 are not prime. And now we got our answer. Look, I've had people in the past tell me, Mr. Delgado, what about zero? Zero looks to be a prime number. But see, the thing is, a prime number by definition is a number that is only divisible by itself and one. Zero is not a prime. It's not divisible. It's, it's nothing. You can't do it. That's just not going to work. And of course, one is not a prime because it's got to be divisible by two numbers, itself and one. One actually is only divisible by one number, which is one. The probability of duck. 
Okay, so we got probability. Having a successful trip is 13 fifteenths. Okay, let me write that out because I don't like seeing numbers like that. I'd rather see it like that. There you go. Calculate the odds of not having a successful. Ooh, so this one is success and this is the total. Well, we're looking for not success. We're looking for not success and hopefully, Oh man, these kids are a little bit more positive than that. I mean, Doug, come on, man. We gotta look for successful stuff all the time. Don't be thinking about the unsuccessful stuff. There's two that are not successful, and there's gonna be 13 that are successful. How'd I get that two? Well, subtracted it from 15. As simple as that. 13 from 15, and we got two. Two enter. 13 divide, and we get our answer of 1.54 times 10 to the negative first power or 0.154. Look, probability is super easy. I think probability is one of the easiest questions in the test. The thing is, you actually have to know how to do it. You actually have to know what's going on. So we got our we got our total marbles right here. Calculate the probability of drawing a blue, then a white, if the first drawn is not replaced. Okay, we're gonna have to have some totals change. So my total here is 12 and eight, make 20, plus 15 is 35, plus six is 41. We got 41 total marbles in that jar. So we want a blue one first. So my first fraction is going to be 12 blue out of 41 total. Okay. And I hope you see that. Hope you see that. Hope you see that. Now we're going to be looking for white, but notice that that blue one is in my hand. I picked it up. I grabbed it from the jar. So I don't have 41 total anymore. I only have 40 because that blue one is in my hand. It was right there not replace that's the key terms here so how many white do i got i got 15 and so now i could go ahead and multiply these fractions together and that's it easiest way 12 dot 12 dot 41 and then we just go ahead and hit enter dot 15 dot 40 we go ahead and hit multiply and our correct answer here is going to be 1.10 times 10 to the negative first or even better 0 0.110 okay look it's easy work it's easy work ladies and gentlemen if you know how to work with probability probability is super easy calculate the odds of selecting a blue from a jar that has 50 red 50 blue 40 yellow and 25 white well we're looking for the what we're looking for the blue so our blue is gonna be 50 blue okay but remember this is odds this is odds we do not care about the total we care well we care about the total possibly but we don't not gonna put the total as a denominator so I got a hundred total right here with the 40 make 140 plus the 25 make 165 but you better not put 165 here because we got to take away those blue and really it's hundred and fifteen not blue this is odds this is odds you got to make sure that the denominator is not the total but the complement of what you're looking for so we put 50 enter, 115 divide, and that's that. 4.35 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.435, easiest way to do it. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Calculate the odds of rolling a double on a pair of dice. Okay, what's a double? Well, double ones. That's one, that's the, get one, one, uh, two, two, uh, three, three, uh, four, four, five, five, and you know what? I'm gonna change that four. That four looks a little sloppy. Five, five, and of course, six, six. So how many doubles did I write down? I mean, you can see it yourself. We got ourselves one, two, three, four, five, six. Six ways of rolling a double. Six doubles. Remember, this is odds though. Our total probability, our total possibility is 36, so my not doubles are going to be 30. So 6 out of 30, we bust that out in the calculator, we get 2.00 times 10 to the negative first, or standard notation style, 0.200. All right. Calculate the probability of drawing the double five domino from a set of double six dominoes. A set of double six dominoes con contains double blank to double six. Okay. So look, we haven't seen a single domino question, but dominoes are pretty interesting because they got two sides on each domino. So zero, zero is one domino. Zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, 
zero, 05 and zero, 06. These are all the dominoes that have a zero. But after that, we go to our next set, which is 1, 1. Notice I did not write 1, 0. Why? Because it's already here. 1, 0 is already here. Okay? They don't put it again. It's already there. So we're not going to do 1, 0. But then we got 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, and 1, 6. Okay? These are all our dominoes, all right? Now, we're not going to write 2, 1. We're not going to write 2, 0 because they're already written down. But we're going to start with 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6. This is how dominoes work. This is how it works. So hopefully you're already seeing what's going on here. We have 3, 3. Let me go ahead and erase that 4. That 4 looks a little sloppy, man. I think it automatically turned into a, a, like a 9 looking thing. We've got 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 6. 5-5, five, 5-6, five, five, and only 6-6. Six, six. These are our total sets of dominoes. And if you count, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that start with a 0, 6 that start with a 1, 5 that start with a 2, so that's already, what, 16, 4 that start with a, what, what is this, 7, 6, that's 13, plus 5 is 18, I apologize, 4 with the 3, that's 22, plus 3 more, 25, plus 2 more, 27, plus 1 more. So there's a total of 28 total dominoes. But here's the deal. They defined a double 6 dominoes not as the total dominoes. They defined them as 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and 6, 6. That's how they defined them. So in this problem here, we are looking for the double five out of our double six sided. And we're looking at probability here. So in this problem, we got one double five. And since we're only looking at the double six dominoes, we have seven total. So our probability here is gonna be one divided by seven. And our correct answer is 1.43 times 10 to the negative first or 0.143 all right that's just what it is just what it is i mean i think it's pretty easy i think it's pretty easy once we get to know what's going on but we got to know what's going on an event happening the odds six out of 31 calculate the probability easy work six is my happening this is my happening and odds is 31 my denominator is 31. So my total is gonna be 37. We type that in our calculator, six enter, 37 divide, and we get our answer. 1.62 times 10 to the negative one, or 0.162. Dude, it's pretty easy, pretty easy. All right, next one. Calculate the probability of drawing a double domino from a standard double six domino set, okay? Double six. So we just did that a little while ago. It's still on the page. It's still right up there. You could even see it. We got 28 total. Is the 28 important? Oh, you better believe the 28 is important. The 28 is going to be our denominator because it's a probability question, okay? Probability. Now, how many doubles did we have? Well, as you could see... When we did this, we had seven total doubles in our double six dominoes. So we're gonna go ahead and put seven. Seven are my doubles, all right? From double blank, from double zero, double one, two, three, four, five, and six. We got a total of seven. So seven divided by 28, I mean, some of you could already see it. We're gonna go ahead and have 2.50 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.250. And that's it. And that's that. That's that, ladies and gentlemen. It's not hard. It's not hard. Probably super easy. It's super easy. But we got to understand the problem. So we got another domino question. We got probability. We're drawing a domino with at least one prime number of dots on it. Okay. So this is from a double six domino standard set. So we already know our total. Our total is going to be 28 total. All right. Now I could go ahead and redo this. Redo this little list. But it's already up here. So I'm just going to scroll up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to scroll up and let's go ahead. I'm going to use a blue one this time. And we're going to look at least one prime number on the domino. So 0, 2, 0, 3, 
zero, five. Those have at least one. Now next one, one, two, one, three, and one, five. Now everything that's a two has at least one prime. Everything that's a three has at least one prime. Everything that's a five has at least one prime. And we got four, five. And now let's count them up. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. There are eighteen dominoes that have at least one prime. Eighteen, one prime. At least one prime. So I'm gonna just put one prime, but I hear, hope you're hearing me. There's at least one prime on these. So eighteen, enter. 28 divide. Easy work. 6.43 times 10 to the negative 1 or 0.643. So easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Easy stuff. All right, next one, next one. Calculate the probability of drawing a red queen from a standard deck of cards. Okay, you remember when I was talking about those queens and the suits and all that other stuff? Well, there's four suits. And let me go ahead and just remind you. We got ourselves clubs. Okay, it's kind of like a clover, but we call them clubs. We got ourselves, well, I kind of drew that wrong. Let me try again. We got ourselves spades, okay? But those aren't red. Those are black. But then we got ourselves hearts, and then we got diamonds. So really, there's only two suits that are red, and we're looking for that red queen. So we have two queens that are red. So two red queens out of a total of 52. And that's the probability. To enter, 52 divide, and our answer is gonna be 3 point, what is that, 85 times 10 to the negative second. Or even better, 0 0.0385. That's it, that's it. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. What's the probability of drawing a face card from a standard deck of cards? Okay, yet again, we got to understand our face cards. Jack, queen, king. So there's four suits. Four times these three, it's going to be 12. 12 faces out of a total of 52. That's it. That's it. So 12 enter, 52 divide. And our correct answer here, let me put this one more time. I think I did this wrong. Is going to be... 2.31 times 10 to the negative first or 0.231 simple the good thing about 72 is we already have it set up we got 12 faces we got 12 faces yeah we got 12 now i don't have 12 faces i'm talking about the cards because i'm already reading we're drawing a face card from a standard deck of cards so we got 12 faces and now we know it's 52 total but it's not 52 the denominator it's going to be 40 why? Because it says odds. 12 enter, 40 divide, and we go ahead and call it 3.00 times 10 to the negative 1, or 0.300. Some of you might have been able to see it if we just simplify 3 tenths. What's the odds of rolling a double on a pair of dice? Well, we went over doubles a little while ago. How can we get a double? Well, 1, 1, 2, 2. 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and 6, 6. So there's six doubles, okay? But since it's odds, we got to not put it over 36. We're going to put it over how many are not doubles. And since there's 36 total, there's 30 that are not doubles. So our correct answer here is going to be 2.00 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.200 right easy work easy work here let's take out the 72 calculate okay sorry about that a bag contains 20 gold 17 silver 22 bronze so we could go ahead and just add them up already we got what 39 right here we got a total of 59 coins okay that's our total calculate the probability of drawing a bronze then a silver if the first coin is not replaced so we're going to be doing some subtraction here all right so we're looking for a bronze first. We got 22 bronze, 22 bronze out of a total of 59. We're going to go ahead and multiply that by, we're looking for a silver. So now we only have 17 silver. 
right? Because that's what our problem says. But we're not going to have a total of 59, right? Since it's not replaced, that initial bronze is now in my hand. Like, I'm holding on to it. So we're going to go ahead and point 22. Then 59 divide. Sorry, sorry about that. You could put point 22, dot 59. And then we could put dot 17, dot 58. And just multiply our two answers right there. So in this problem, we got our answer as 0 0.109. Or 1.09 times 10 to the negative first. Now look, if you're not going to use the trick, you're not going to use the dot dot trick to go ahead and have like a mixed number without a whole number attached. You could just hit 22 enter, 59 divide. You could hit 17 enter, 58 divide. And then those two answers, you multiply them. That's how you do this, all right? All right, next one we got going on here. We got 25 dots are randomly marked on different degrees on the circle. Ooh, this is a good problem because we actually got to know some stuff about circle. All right. A spinner is made and capable of stopping at all degrees. If the spinner is spun, calculate the odds. Odds, we got odds. It will stop on one of the 25 dots. Well, the thing is, we got to know how many degrees are in a circle. And I'll tell you right now, there's 360 total degrees in a circle. So I imagine 25 of them have dots on them. Since this is odds, we got to figure out how many will not have dots. We get our 360, take away 25, right? 360 take away 25, and we end up with 335. So it's going to be 25, 25 dots over 335 that are not dots. And there we go. We get ourselves our answer. And our correct answer for this, my odds, will be 7.4, what, 6 times 10 to the negative second. Or even better, 0 0.0746. All right, probability and odds, man. Super easy, but we just got to practice. Calculate the odds of rolling an 8 on a pair of dice. Okay, so hopefully you remember that to get a 7, we got 6 ways to get a 7. To get an 8, we only got 5 ways to get an 8. So there are 5 ways roll 8 on a pair of dice. Okay, what are they? Well, to roll an 8, we could go 2 and 6, 3 and 5, 4 and 4, or 5 and what was it? 5 and 3, 6 and 2. So there's 5 total ways, okay? I had to think about that for a second. I was like, wait a second, did it say that one? But yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Now we're doing odds. So how many ways not roll 8? 31. Because remember, we got to know that 36 total. So 5 enter, 31 divide, and we get our answer here. 1.61 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.161. Easy work, easy work, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next problem here. Calculate the probability of rolling three doubles in a row on a pair of dice. Woo-wee! So here's the deal. You got to understand what's the probability of rolling one double, all right? So we've been doing this a little bit. And we saw that there's six doubles out of a total of 36. But we don't want to just roll it once. We want to roll it how many times? Three. So we're going to get six out of 36, and we're going to multiply it by six out of 36. And then we're going to multiply that by six out of 36. These are independent events. This is not a replacement problem where our totals change or something changes here, okay? we could roll the same double three times. That's why our double state is six the whole way through. It's not like those other problems with replacements where you know we might have decreased. That's not happening here. So if you could think about it even this way, you could have six over 36 to the third power or even simplify it as one over, thir one over six to the third power. Both ways are correct. You could even hit 6, 1 over x, and then 3, y over x, and we got it. That's it. My correct answer for this problem is 4.63 times 10 to the negative third. Lots of different ways to do this. Or 0 0.00463. But notice, dude, that is a small percent chance of this ever happening. That's less than the percent. That's less than half of a percent chance that this would ever happen, okay? So don't put money on this one. <clears throat> 
A bag contains 258 or 228 marbles. Okay, so that's already total. The probability of drawing out a red marble is one fourth. Calculate the odds of drawing out a red marble. See, this is the crazy thing. Like some people will overcomplicate this problem. They gave us some information that's really not necessary. We already know the probability. The probability here is given to us as one out of four. So what's the odds? One out of three. Because this is the one represents the red, and there's gotta be three that are not red. That's what they gave us in this question. We could overcomplicate this. And we could actually do a proportion and figure out how many are actually read and all yada yada yada. But ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful thing about probability is that we don't need to do all that stuff. If you understand the mathematics, use that brain of yours. Because that's what we have that's such a big blessing to us. We have a brain as humans and we're able to communicate our ideas and use our brain to come up with new patterns. And that's why we got to understand this stuff. Because the more we understand this stuff, the easier patterns become, all right? So next problem, calculate the probability of drawing a 10 from a standard deck of 52 cards and then rolling a sum of 10 on a fair pair of dice. So this is going to be multiple events, a compound event, and we're going to go ahead and have to multiply our fractions. How many ways can we get a 10? Or wait, sorry, how, how many 10s do we have in the deck of cards? Four 10s out of 52 total. Next, how many ways can we roll a sum of 10? Remember. 12, one way. 11, two ways. So 10, three ways. So we got three sum of 10 over how many total ways on a pair of dice? 36 total. And we're gonna multiply this. So four, enter, 52, divide. Then we could go ahead and hit three, enter, 36, divide. And then multiply our two fractions. Our correct answer for this becomes 6.41 times 10 to the negative third, or 0 0.00641. Oof, less than a percent again. Less than a percent again. Okay, so we got this Mar Marla person. Is Marla Maria? Looks like it's Marla. But anyways, it could be Maria if you want. Maria, 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 Maria. So we're flipping a fair coin 20 times, and it landed on heads 18 out of those 20. Wow, that's a pretty lucky coin. But here's the deal. It's fair. So that just happened coincidentally, but it's fair. That means it's still 50-50 shot. So calculate the odds that the next flip, it will land on tails. I'm going to tell you right now, I bet you a lot of people would put 2 out of 18. But it's not because there's really one tails on that coin. And then there's only one that is not tails on that coin. So really, I mean, people get this wrong by overthinking of it. We don't care about those previous 20 times it was rolled. That has nothing to do when we flip the coin right now. I mean, really, our answer is gonna be 1.00 times 10 to the zero power, or 1.00. We don't have to do all that work. We don't have to, okay? They're throwing stuff in there to see if you're gonna fall for the traps. And hopefully, we don't fall for these traps, okay, ladies and gentlemen? All right, calculate the odds of drawing a face card from a standard deck of 52 cards. Well, again, how many faces do we have? There are 12 face cards. When you do probability enough, this stuff will just come naturally to you because we've already done it so much, you're gonna remember how many face cards they have. And of course, if you play if you play card games, you know, don't go to Vegas too early, you know what I'm saying? Look, I've never gone to Vegas, but I know a little bit of math, so I think I could hold my own if I ever do. But I, I'm not, that's not me, that's not me. I have not gone to Vegas. But, you know, you go to Vegas, you know math. I mean, it's, it's all about probabilities, all about those likelihoods. So we got 3.00 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.300. Easy work, easy clap, easy clap. Next problem, we got ourselves a bag, 52 gold, 71 silver, 88 copper. If a coin is drawn and then replaced, we wanna calculate probability of drawing a gold and then a copper. This is a good problem here, okay? So we gotta add these all up, 52, plus 88, plus 71. You know what, I'm not gonna do this in my head. Let's go in and use our technology. That's why we have the technology. Look, 
if I had a computer, I would just bang the calculator, you know, just like a SpongeBob, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of that SpongeBob. But I don't have the technology to go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> but you know what I do got? I could I got my answer for the total. We add these all up, it seems like we have 211. Make sure make sure I do this correctly, okay? And then plus the 7, yeah, 211. 211 is my total. So we want to draw a gold one first. So gold is going to be 52 gold out of 211 total. All right? It's being replaced, so I don't have to subtract here. I do not have to subtract. I still have 211. I'm putting it back in. I pick up the gold, and I throw it back in the bag. But I still have 211 total. But now, my numerator is going to change because now I'm looking for copper. And how many copper do I got? I got 88. So, we could go ahead and do this problem. Dot 52, dot 211, enter. Dot 88, dot 211, multiply. And that's that. 1.03 times 10 to the negative first. Or 0 0.103. Okay? Easy, easy work. All right, next one. Calculate the odds of drawing a prime numbered card from a standard deck of cards. All right, so how many are prime numbers? We got two, we got three, we got five, we got seven. So there's four. And four times four makes a total of six primes. Remember, this is odds. So we're going to get 52 and take away 16. 16 primes. So that's going to leave us with 36 that are not primes. 16 over 36, 16 enter, 36 divide, and we got ourselves 4.44 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.444. Easy work, ladies and gentlemen, easy work. All right, look, I, <laughs> I remember when I was making this handout, I love this one. We got a circular spinners divided into equal sections with the numbers 1, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5. Calculate the odds, okay, this is important, odds, of landing on a space with the letter A. Wow. I mean, I was laughing when I saw this one. How many A's do we got on that spinner? Zero. It doesn't even matter what the denominator is. Of course, we got six equal sections, so we could put six that are not A, but dude, we got zero A's. The, the answer's gonna be zero. It's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0. 0. 0.00 times 10 to the 0, or 0. 0.00. I mean, this is what it is. But you can't just write 0. I've seen kids just write 0 because it's this easy, and then they get it wrong. Don't fall for the trap, okay? Now, I like this one here. This one's good. Calculate the probability of flipping a fair coin seven times and always landing on heads. All right. So, I hope you could see we want the same exact outcome each time. So, really, we have one heads out of two total. But we don't need to multiply it by one half times one half times one half because it's the same fraction every time. So, what we could do is just raise it to the seventh power. So, we got half seven while we're x. And our probability of this happening is 7.81 times 10 to the negative 3, or 0 0.00781. Not even a full percent chance this happening. That's that's kind of that's kind of harsh right there. Probability: rolling a sum of eight on a standard pair of dice. Okay. Well, again, I think we already saw this one. Okay. We saw something like this. We got six ways to roll a seven. So how many ways do we roll an eight? Five. So there's five, sum of eight, out of how many total on a two dice, on a pair of dice? 36 total. So we go ahead, five enter, 36 divide, and we got our answer of 1.39 times 10 to the negative first. And that's it. Or 0 0.139, okay? Next one. Circular spinner is divided into equal sections. Three sections are red. Two sections are green, four sections are blue. Calculate the probability of spinning the spinner five times and always landing on green. This is very similar to that last problem we just did. We're looking for green. How many green do we got? Seems like there's two green. Since it's a probability, since it's a probability, we gotta get the total. Three plus two plus four 
seems to make a total of nine. Two ninths. But we don't have to do two ninths times two ninths times two ninths. We could just two ninths raised to the fifth power because we're gonna spin it five times and it's the exact same probability. So decimal two, decimal nine, we got two ninths and then we're gonna go five y over x. And the probability of this happening actually, which is the smallest probability, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write in standard notation just so you guys could see it. But really this is 0 0.000542. This one, oh man, it's not even, like this is crazy. This is really low. This is really low. The probability of this ever happening is just ne no, 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 <laughs> no, it ain't gonna happen. Jar of marbles contains seven red, two blue, eight yellow, and one, only one black. Calculate the probability of reaching the jar and pulling out the black one. Okay, that's why I like it. I like it. They're going for that hard one right there. Better have that jackpot attached. We got one black. And now we got to figure out the total. 7 plus 2 is what? 9 plus 8 is 17 plus one more, 18. There's 18 total marbles in this jar. So we're going to hit 1 enter, 18 divide, and we got our answer. 5.56 times 10 to the negative second power, or decimal 0556. Easy work. All right here, we got ourselves a circular spinner, 10 equal sections, each section containing one of the digits zero through nine inclusive. I like that word inclusive. I wanna highlight it again, inclusive. What that means is everything between those is included in the data, everything between those. Calculate the probability of spinning and landing on a prime number. All right, prime numbers, two, three, five, seven. So there's going to be four prime numbers between 0 and 9. So there's four prime. And how many equal sections do we have? 10. 10 total. So if you know a little bit of math, you can already guess, guess right here. It's going to be 4.00 times 10 to the negative 1. Or 0.400. It's very important that you actually know how to write a correct form. 4 tenths is 0.4, you'd write 0.4, you just go over here, let me write 0.4. And that's all you write? Wrong format, you need three significant digits, ladies and gentlemen. So we gotta make sure we write it correctly, okay? Calculate the odds, rolling a sum greater than seven on a standard pair of dice. Okay, so how many numbers are greater than seven? We got eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Those are all the numbers greater than seven. How many ways can we roll 12? 1. How many ways can we roll 11? 2. How many ways can we roll a 10? 3. How many ways can we roll a 9? 4. How many ways can we roll a 8? 5. We add these numbers up and we get ourselves 15 greater than 7. Okay? Let me let me erase that 7. Greater than 7. All right? So now how many ways are not greater than 7? Well, of course we get 36 take away the 15 and we got 21 that are not greater because we are looking at odds. 15 enter, 21 divide, and we got ourselves 7.14 times 10 to the negative first power or decimal 714, all right? Let's get it. I like this problem because, uh, you know, I mean, we just gotta understand how to read it. We got a certain bag of candies. Joan knows the probability of getting a mint is five out of 64. The probability of getting a chocolate is 10 out of 32. The probability of getting a sour is one out of eight, okay? So what we're doing here is checking out this, this kind of probability, the way it's looking at. Now, a couple people might realize immediately that we could change all of these fractions. We got five out of 64, 10 out of 32, we could change into 64s by multiplying both sides by two. And one eighth, we could change it to 64, it's by multiplying both sides by eight. And since we are looking for the probability she will not get these, we could go ahead and add these fractions up, add these numerators, and we end up with 33 of these 64 candies are either gonna be mint, 
chocolate, or sour. So where you don't want any of those, well, it's going to be 31 that are not those candies. Out of the total of 64. If you know math, these are easy questions, ladies and gentlemen. If you know math, these are easy questions. Now, here's another way we could have done it. We could have added these fractions up and then just taken it away from 100% or 1, the number 1. And that's the complement. That's the complement. But we end up with 4.84 times 10 to the negative first or 0.484. Okay, easy work. All right, next problem. Let's go ahead and check it out. Calculate the odds of rolling a standard die and landing on an even number. Hmm, how many even numbers do we have on a dice? On the standard die? We got three. How many are not even? Three. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you know what you're doing, these are easy questions. Next one. Now, this one, we're going to have some little math here. We're going to have to figure out the positive difference in the probability of drawing a king from a standard deck of cards compared to the standard deck of cards with two jokers. So really, we got to figure out two different probabilities. We're going to, how many kings do we got? Four kings out of 52. That's a standard one, standard one, okay? But now they're asking us, well, what's the difference between them if I have four kings and we're playing a game that has 54 cards total? because they included the jokers this time. And so we're gonna get both of these numbers and just subtract them. So we got four, enter, 52, divide. Four, enter, 54, divide. And then we subtract them. And we gotta make sure that we have a positive answer. Why? Because it's a positive difference. So if you subtracted them the wrong way, in the wrong order, you might've gotten a negative, just turn it positive. But our correct answer here is 2.85 times 10 to the negative third or 0 0.00285 all right easy work all right if the odds of an event are happening are three out of two what's the probability of this happening well three out of five i mean it's easy ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you the more we practice the easier it becomes so shouldn't be that hard you know what i'm saying we got to understand math is easy when we practice it what are the odds of rolling a pair of dice and the sum of the faces not being a prime number? Ooh, these are good. So we got to understand which ones are not prime numbers, okay? We got four. We got, mm, what, six, eight, nine. Then we got 10. Then we got 12. These are the numbers we're going to be looking at here. Okay, so how many ways can we roll a 12? Well, one. How many ways can we roll a 10? Three. How many ways can we roll a nine? Four. How many ways can we roll a eight? Five. How many rows can we roll a six? Five. Remember, seven has six ways. How many ways can we roll a four? Three. This is what we need to be able to get this. So how many are not prime? How many are not prime? So if we add this up, we got ourselves, what, 10 plus three is 13 plus another three is 16, plus four is 20. So we got 21, 21, <laughs> that are not prime. How many are prime? Well, if there's 36 total, we subtract 21 from 36, and there's 15 that are prime. 21 enter, 15 divide, and our correct answer is 1.40 times 10 to the zero, or 1.40, 1.40, easy work, easy work. All right, let's take a look at this next one right here. A sack of coins has 12 gold, seven silver, 22 bronze, all right? What is the probability of drawing two bronze coins in a row if the first one is not replaced? All right, so first things first, 12 and 22 make 34. 34 plus seven, 41 total. So we got 41 total right now. We're looking for two bronze in a row, two bronze in a row. So how many bronze we got first? We got 22 bronze, but since it's two, coins in a row we're gonna have two fractions that we're gonna multiply and since we want another bronze the bronze is in my hand from the first coin that I drew I'm only gonna have 21 bronze left and my total is also decreasing so it's gonna be 40 total 
So 22 enter 41 divide. 21 enter 40 divide. And then we hit multiply to connect it. And in this problem, it seems to me that we're going to have about 2.82 times 10 to the negative 1 uh, probability or 0.282. That's it. That's that. All right. What's the probability of rolling a pair of dice and the sum of the faces is greater than 10? Oof, so how many numbers are greater than 10? Well, we got 11 and we got 12. One way to get 12, two ways to get 11. So we got that information. So we got three greater than 10. And how many total we got? 36 total. So we go ahead and put 3 in or 36 divide. And our correct answer for this problem seems to be 8.33 times 10 to the negative second. Or 0 0.0833. All right? I mean, look, the more and more we practice, the easier this becomes. All right? Jar contains 6 blue, 8 red, 12 yellow, and 1 black marble. What's the probability of drawing a black marble and then a red marble if the first marble drawn is replaced? We're not going to need to subtract here. We just need to be able to set up the two fractions. We're trying to draw black. So that one's easy. One black. One black out of... Well, let's figure this out. 6 and 8 make what? 14 plus 12 make 26 plus 1 make a total of 27. All right. Since we're replacing it, that total stays unchanged. It's still going to be 27 total. But now we're working with that red. Well, how many red do we got? We got 8 red. So really this problem becomes 1 times 8. Right? I'm going to write it this way. 1 times 8 and then 27 squared because 27 times 27 so you can go ahead and set up this problem right here and then we connect them and it looks like my probability here is going to be 1.10 times 10 to the negative second or 0 0.0110 both ways are correct next problem we got odds rolling a six on a fair die and flipping a quarter and landing on tails okay so how many sixes do we got one six how many are not sixes? Five, not six. Remember, this is a die. It is a die. That means there's only one. Only one, okay? If you thought it was dice, we might have a big problem here. You might have set this up wrong. Then we got flipping a quarter, and so we're looking for tails. So there's one tails out of one not tails. Oof. Really? The answer is going to be one fifth because we just the identity property multiplication. When you multiply the numerator by 1 and the denominator by 1, it's going to be the same numerator and denominator. This problem is going to be 2.00 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.200. Okay? Easy work. Okay. What are the odds of rolling a standard die and landing it on an even number, and then drawing a club from a standard deck of cards? This one's kind of interesting because if you know about our suits, this is kind of interesting. It's very easy. So we want odds, the even number. So there's three even. And how many are not even on a die? Well, there's three not even. Notice we have ourselves that one again. So that first fraction don't even really, you know, it doesn't really affect us here. So let's look at the second fraction. Okay, so how many clubs do we have? Let's see, let's see. We have a total of 13. You know what, but we don't need to look at those clubs. We only have four suits. So if we only have four suits, one of them, one of the suits is clubs, and that means three are not clubs. So really here, ladies and gentlemen, we just got to do one divided by three. And our correct answer is 3.33 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.333. Look, the more we practice this, ladies and gentlemen, the easier it gets, easier it gets. Man, there's a lot of problems on this, but you know what? We're getting to, we're getting closer, so let's go ahead and do it. What is the probability of rolling a fair die and landing on five and flipping a quarter and landing on heads? Okay, fair die, one out of six times one out of two. So we get a total of one out of 12. One, enter, 12, divide. 
8.33 times 10 to the negative second, or 0 0.0833. All right, what are the odds of drawing a jack of diamonds? Jack of diamonds, oh man, there's only one jack of diamonds. And there's 52 total, so 51 is gonna be the denominator. One enter, 51 divide. So our answer is gonna be 1.96 times 10 to the negative second. All right, I'm not gonna put both forms anymore. I'm gonna put what I feel is easier for me, okay? What is the probability of drawing a red queen? Okay, we got two red queens. We got two red queens out of a total of 52. So to enter, 52 divide. All right, 3.85 times 10 to the negative second. What are the odds? What are the odds of rolling a fair die and landing on a number larger than two? So there's five numbers larger than two. And there's only one, two. So, wait, wait, wait. There's not five numbers larger than two. I'm overthinking this. It's only a fair die. There are four numbers larger than two. And there's two that are not, which is one and two. So, really, our answer is going to be 2.00. Easiest way to write it down. Okay, four divided by two. What's the probability of rolling a fair die and landing on a three? That one's cake. One divided by six. There's one three out of six total. So, our answer is... 0.167 okay what are the odds of flipping a penny and landing on heads wow so one heads out of one not heads so we put 1.00 what's the probability oh i like this one i like this one i'm gonna take and spend some time with this what's the probability of rolling a double decahedron this is 12 sides with faces numbered one to the number of faces and it landing on a face numbered with a prime so 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. So we have 5 prime out of a total of 12 sides. 5 enter, 12 divide. But look, ladies and gentlemen, the more we practice this, it's going to get easy. 0.417 or 4.17 times 10 to the negative first power. We just got to understand that these things aren't that hard. But we got to make sure we could do it. All right, so we got 40% probability it will rain. 40% rain. So what are the odds it will not rain? So we have 60 not rain, because when we subtract, we get 60. 40 from 100 will be 60. So we end up with 60 divided by 40, and we end up with 1.50. Or 1.50 times 10 to the 0, but I wouldn't even write that. All right, next one. Probability of rolling a die in the shape of dodecahedron. That's, again, 12. And landing on 8. We only have 1 8, 1 out of 12. And there you go. 1 enter, 12 divide. And that's that. 8.33 times 10 to the negative second. Okay. What are the odds of rolling a standard pair of dice and getting a sum of 8 or 9? Well, I remember 7. 7, there's 6 ways to get 7. So that means there's 5 ways to get 8. And then that means there's 4 ways to get 9. So these two combined means we have a total of 9 that we get what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. Now there's 36 total. Take away 9 from it. That means there's 27 of what we're not looking for. 9 divided by 27. Some of you know number sense. You could be able to simplify that real easy. It's 0.33. 3, 0.333. It's a third. So there you go. Next one. Probability of rolling a pair of standard six dot die and getting a sum greater than seven. That means eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we're gonna have to add these all up. So we get one, two, three, four, five. My total is gonna be thirty-six. And how many are greater than seven? Well, there's 15 that are greater than 7. So 15 divided by 36, we end up with 0.417. All right, this one looks good. This one looks good. What is the probability of drawing one of each type of coin in the order gold, silver, and bronze if none are replaced? Oh, this one's going to be nice. So when we add these up, we get 222. My total is 222. So let's go ahead and do that. 222. Okay, I want the gold ones first, so it's 125. So I pick my gold one up. Now I want the silver one. Silver one is going to be 75, but now it's going to be 221. 
Now I want that bronze one. It's going to be 22 bronze, but now my total is 220. And so now I set it up. Dot 125, dot 222. Enter. Dot 75, dot 221, multiply. Dot 22, dot 220, multiply. And there we go. Our correct answer is going to be 1.91 times 10 to the negative second. Easy work, ladies and gentlemen. Easy work. All right, next problem. What are the odds of drawing a queen of hearts? Well, there's only one queen of hearts from a standard deck of playing cards. So one out of 51 because it's odds. And our answer is 1.96 times 10 to the negative second. Bag of marbles contains eight blue, two green, seven black. What is the probability of drawing two green marbles if the first one is not replaced? Oof, I like this. We're gonna have to subtract from our total. So we got a total of 24. We got 24 total, 24 total, okay? So we could go ahead and put how many marbles? Nine are green. But since that green one's in my hand, now I have eight green. And my total has dropped down to 23 because that green one is in my hand. We multiply those and we get our answer. So we get dot nine, dot 24, enter. Dot eight, dot 23, multiply. My correct answer here is 0 0.130. Pretty easy, pretty easy. All right, let's check out this next one. What are the odds of flipping a quarter and having it not land on heads? That one's easy, one out of one. And rolling a six standard die, standard six sided die, and having it not land on a one. Well, that's gonna be five that are not ones over one. So really when we multiply these across, we get five over one or just five, 5.00. Okay, hopefully that made sense. What is the probability of flipping a nickel and having it land on heads? So that's one out of two. And rolling a standard six sided die and having it land on three. There's one three out of six. So our correct answer is 1 out of 12. And 1, enter, 12 divide, we end up with 0 0.0833. All right, what are the odds of not drawing a king from a standard deck of playing cards? Well, there's 52 total, so that means there's four kings, right? There's four kings. So how many are not kings? Well, there's going to be 48 not kings out of four kings because this is a odds question 48 divided by four correct answer is 12.0 probability of drawing a king from a standard deck of playing cards well we just kind of did that there's four kings but now we got 52 total so we go ahead and type that in there for enter 52 divide and we end up with 7.69 times 10 to the negative second Okay, so I mean, they're pretty easy. I hope you're getting the hang of it. I mean, it's pretty easy once you keep practicing. What's the odds of rolling a standard six handed die and having it land on six? One six, five not sixes. Correct answer is 0 0.200. Probability of rolling a standard six sided die and having it land on a two? One out of six. One enter, six divide. We end up with 0.167. What are the odds of flipping a dime? and having it land on tails. Well, that one's kind of easy. One tails, one not tails, 1.00. All right. The probability of finishing this calculated test is 17 twentieths. That's probability. 17 finish out of 20 total. What are the odds of not finishing? Oh, I like this one. We're doing odds. We're doing odds here. So if there's 17 finish and 20 total, that means there's three not finished. And it's not out of the total, it's going to be out of our finish, which is 17. So three out of 17, three enter, 17 divide, and we end up with 0.176. That's it. Last problem. I know it's a doozy. I mean, this has been an hour and a half. I've been yelling at you guys pretty much. But hopefully, you got to practice a ton of probability and odds questions. And this is going to be the last one. I like this one a lot. What is the probability of flipping three quarters and at least one landing on heads? Oof. So there's a lot of different outcomes here, okay? So we got to think of it this way. What could happen when we flip three quarters, okay? Well, we could get heads, heads, heads. We could get heads, heads, tails. Cool. 
we could also get tails, heads, heads, right? Or we could also get tails, heads, tails. Hmm. We could also get heads, tails, heads. Or we could also get heads, tails, tails. Okay? Now here, we could get tails, tails, heads. Or we could end up with tails, tails, tails. So really, there's only eight different outcomes that could happen. There's eight total outcomes. We want at least one landing on heads. That's heads, 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 heads. At least one. There's only one that's not heads. So really, there's going to be seven with at least, at least one heads. So ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be that last probability question. And I hope I didn't tire you out because, you know, look, I did talk for a long time. And I'm able to do it because I'm excited about this math. And we did a lot of questions. Honestly, I think we did a ton of questions. The way I'm looking at it right here is we pretty much did like five years worth of probability questions, probability questions in one little, like, man, this was crazy. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't done something like this in a while. I'm kind of like impressed in my own abilities, right? Because we went through this, and I'm going to show you right here how many different pages we got here. We went through 13 pages of questions. That's over 60 questions. And, whew. But you know what? These 60 questions hopefully are going to get that probability of yours on point. Because we got, we got a lot to go here. We got a lot to go, and I'm here to help you guys, okay? So... I mean, we, we didn't, I mean, look at all these questions we did. I mean, geez Louise, there's a lot of problems here. But I hope you feel really good about this stuff, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm here to help you guys. And I hope you feel good about this because I think in the future, we're going to take it. You're going to take it. And even if you don't take it, I hope you learn something. Because really, ladies and gentlemen, this is about you and your learning. Remember that, okay? So I hope you guys have a great day because I had a great time here and hopefully you learned something because that's the whole goal, all right? Hope you have a good one. This is Mr. 500 and I hope you have a great night, all right?